This video looks at how you can use MATLAB to solve partial fractions. Now, we're going to assume that students can do inverse Laplace techniques with pen and paper, and they're probably convinced by now that it's relatively tedious, and although you need to understand it, you might not want to do it this way in practice. So the aim here is to ask how we can use software tools perhaps to check the working on pen and paper, or indeed to automate this in general, especially where the tasks are numerically demanding, which is often the case when you're doing partial fractions. Why do it on pen and paper when a computer can do it much more quickly and accurately? A reminder then of the key steps when doing an inverse Laplace. The first thing you need to do is to identify what are all the poles in the system. So here you see I've got uh, a transfer or Laplace transform f of s equals q over p and I've said it's got poles r1, r2, all the way up to rn. And you'll remember that from the earlier videos. When we're doing partial fractions, the next step is to identify all the residues the C1, C2, C3, all the way up to Cn. So what we're doing is we're saying, I can write Q over P as C over R1 plus C over R2, all the way up to Cn over Rn. This video will demonstrate how MATLAB can be used to determine the residues, that's the values Ri, sorry, I've got that wrong, that's the poles, Ri, and the residues Ci. First, however, a warning. When you're using MATLAB, it does not distinguish between real and complex poles. So if you have P equals W of S squared plus W squared, just for example, and you try to use MATLAB to find the partial fractions, it will give you A of S plus J omega plus B of S minus J omega. That is, it won't recognize this is a quadratic factor, probably best left as a quadratic factor, it will say, no, there are two separate poles here, so they're complex, I don't really mind, and it will give you the two poles as complex numbers, and indeed the two residues, A and B, will also be complex numbers. A different example here, what if you had N equals AS plus B over S plus A all squared plus omega squared? MATLAB won't recognize that's a quadratic factor in the denominator, and it will say, no, You've got a pole factor here, s plus a plus j omega, and another pole factor, s plus a minus j omega, with corresponding residues a and b, which will be complex. Now, you can show that this capital A, capital B are complex conjugates, but there isn't really much point in that, because that's algebra for the sake of it. How does MATLAB work, then? Well, the basic tool covered in this video is just a single tool, residue dot m. And the command line you can see given here is residues comma poles equals residue comma num comma den. So what are each of these um, variables? First of all poles. Fairly obvious. Poles will be a vector which contains the pole positions ri. It will always give the full complement so if you've got repeated poles it will list that pole more than once as appropriate. Residues. The residues ci will be given in a vector, and the positions will be matched to the positions of the corresponding poles in the poles vector. So the first um, residue and residues will go with the first pole in poles, and the second with the second, and so on. We'll illustrate that in the following slides. And finally, what inputs do you give? Well, you need to give two vectors. I've called them here num and den for um, brevity, but the first argument is a vector of the coefficients of the numerator, and the second argument is a vector of the coefficients of the denominator. And again, this will be more obvious after the following videos. Now, a, a final warning, this video is not going to cover repeated poles. Although MATLAB does do this, it's more advanced than we really want to cover in basic videos. And I would suggest, if you really want to know about repeated poles, type help residue and read what it tells you. First example, then. You'll notice I've given a very simple um, Laplace transform. There it is. F equals 2s plus 1 over s squared plus 10s plus 16. So the first question is, how do we take the information from that transform and put it into residue? Well, you'll notice I've got a vector here, 2, 1, which corresponds to the coefficients of the numerator. 
and then I've got a vector 1, 10, 16, which corresponds to the coefficient of the denominator. So that's all you do. You put in two vectors, vector of the coefficients of the numerator, vector of coefficients of the denominator. I then asked for my two outputs, and you remember the first output is the residues, and the second is the poles. Now it may be obvious to you, I hope it's obvious, that s squared plus 10s plus 16 can be written as s plus 2, s plus 8. So you can almost see by inspection the poles are minus 2 and minus 8. And lo and behold, what do you see down here? MATLAB has told you I've got a pole at minus 8 and a pole at minus 2. And therefore, if I'm going to write out um, my partial fractions, I've got f equals something over s plus 2 plus something over s plus 8. So what I need now is the corresponding residues. Well, you'll see, as we said, you just match them up. So this minus 8 goes with the 2.5. So let's put that over here, 2.5. And the minus 2 goes there, so minus 0.5. So as easy as that. A second example. Now, what we've done here, just to demonstrate a point, is we've chosen an example, you can see that, which has got a quadratic factor s minus 1 of s squared plus 4. Now, as in the previous slide, you can see the vector of numerator coefficients are 1 minus 1, that's for the s minus 1, and the vector of denominator coefficients are 1, 0, 4. It's important you remember that 0, because that's telling MATLAB I've got a 0 coefficient on the s. If you leave that out, it will think you haven't got an s squared. But again, play around on MATLAB and you'll soon get used to the conventions required and the silly mistakes that can be made. Now, the interesting thing is here I can see that there are clearly two poles. I can write the denominator as s plus 2j, s minus 2j. If I expand out s squared plus 4, and lo and behold, what do you notice? MATLAB comes back and says, yes, I've got two poles, and I'm going to give you the actual values. And here, they're an imaginary pole at 2i, an imaginary pole at minus 2i. And it also will give me the corresponding residues. So for the, to, for the 2i, there's the residue, a half plus 0.25i. And for the minus 2i, a half minus 0.25i. So if you were writing partial fractions for this, it's going to be a bit of a mess. You've got a complex residue and a complex pole. I'm not going to suggest you do that, but at least you're aware of how MATLAB operates and what it will do for you. Of course, the final thing to notice, as mentioned earlier, these residues are complex conjugates as expected. A final example, and this one is just to demonstrate, of course, in general, you may have a mixture of uh, simple factors and quadratic factors, and that's what you've got in this f of s here. If you look at s cubed plus 4s squared plus 5s plus 10, and I find the roots, here they are, down here, you find I've used non-simple roots just to demonstrate it doesn't bother MATLAB. You've got a simple root at minus 3.395, and two complex roots at minus 0 0.303, plus or minus 1.69i. You want the corresponding residues, and again, you just match the positions. So that one goes with that one, that one goes with that one, if I just change the colour, that one goes with that one. And so perhaps, although I might not want to do it, just to um, demonstrate the uh, point very clearly, I'll rub that out and I'll write out what the partial fraction will be. You're going to get minus 0.354, that's residue 1, over s plus 3.395, so that's pole 1. Then you're going to get plus 0.177 plus 0.02, sorry, 28i, over s plus 0.303 minus 1.69i, and then you're going to get plus 0.177 minus 0.028i divided by s plus 0.303 plus 1.69i. In summary then, MATLAB can be used to do partial fractions and identify residues in pole positions. However, 
it gives a separate residue for each pole and thus does not group complex conjugates together and if you really needed to do that grouping you'd have to do it by hand or with some clever code. It will do repeated roots, not covered in this video, and if you really want to know about that you should look at help residue to find out how MATLAB does this.